right, fam, so this video is totally different than what we normally do, but this is the day-to-day, -day, and at the end of the day, this is called a trucker's life, and this is what's happening to me exactly right now at this moment. Well, you guys will see it later. You get the point. Anyway, so um, we're gonna go drop off the Coolant Reservoir at a shop in Houston. It's about uh, a good hour away from where I live, and then um, luckily I have a Loves here in town, which is pretty cool. And uh, we're gonna go drop that off. Then we're gonna go see why the, the reservoir is getting so murky, so so nasty looking. Um, it is not normal that it gets like that. So it could be various amount of things. It could be a head gasket, which is the worst case scenario, or it could just be a seal or some type of, uh, the oil cooler might be leaking um, oil into the uh, coolant system. So there, there might be, there's several things that it could be. Now we did get addressed. The rear main seal got uh, swapped, got changed. And we went ahead, if you're gonna drop the transmission, might as well go ahead and uh, and put a new clutch. The clutch was still really good, but at 500,000 miles almost, it's good just to go ahead and slap one in and you don't have to pay for the transmission to come off twice. So we're gonna go take care, take care of that stuff and we're gonna go take care of getting, uh, if the truck's gotta stay in the shop for longer than, it's, than it has so far, we're gonna go ahead and rent a truck from the company. That's one of the good things about working for a big company like Hint of Transportation is that sometimes they have spare trucks that they can rent you, not all the time, but a lot of times when I've needed it, they've always had one that they can rent you, you can continue working. And um, I'll tell you how what it breaks down to day, uh, to rent the truck. So let's head to Houston and then uh, we'll see what happens with the truck and with the rental and all that good stuff. So we just exited McCarty Road, which if anybody knows that lives in the Houston area, McCarty Road is the like the main um, hub for anything that deals with trucks. Like this is the spot. There's a, uh, there's a couple of other little hot spots for trucks in the Houston area, but this right here is the main spot. Whatever you need fixed, it's here on this road, almost guaranteed. Now you do have the three major brands you got international freightliner and um peterbilt and behind me you have kenworth so you have well i guess that's four brands uh, so you have uh the big brands here if you want to get oem parts but if you want to get aftermarket parts you turn down this road and you got tire shops repair shops windshield shops decals whatever you need for your truck is on this road here mccarty and 610 and um, I've been coming here. This is my second time bringing my truck here. Um, I had something happen at the uh, shop that I used to take my truck to all the time. And they're actually working or redoing something that they didn't do right over there here at Ebenezer. So this is a shop here. The only reason I come here is because they're certified pack car, certified um, Cummins. Um, and uh, I think Detroit and Cat and... So they're certified in quite a bit of uh, different makes and models or brands of engines. So that's uh, mainly why I decided to uh, bring my truck here. And as you see, there's old hot chocolate right over there sitting inside there all nice and quiet. So let's get off. Let's go talk to these people in here. Well, I will. Can't take you in there because, you know, put cameras in people's faces. They kind of don't like that. But anyways, um, let me show you guys exactly what I bought and that I'm dropping off here with them. All right, fam, so here is the Coolant Reservoir. Um, TRP is the name brand that I bought this from. Um, I actually bought this off of eBay for about 300 bucks. The original part was about $900, so that's why I decided to go this route. Now, just so you guys can get the gist of what's going on here. So here is the sensor. If you just pop it out, it's not hard to pop out. You pop it right on out there's a little cavity in there and if you see that little that that little um green kind of circle around here that's the actual floater and that's what gets stuck in there um from whenever you know you get all that gunk and all that nastiness that's inside uh your coolant and if you have a foreign um liquid in there like oil it'll make it even worse and it'll be sticking even more often so that's why i've been having such an issue with my reservoir and like i say this is very simple it just pops right on in 
and there you go there's the way your uh, sensor goes in so like i said let's go inside and uh, see what comes out of uh what they tell us okay fam so i need y'all's advice and please give me your honest truth advice i know some of you are gonna be talking your mess you know it's a pack car engine whatever and you shouldn't have bought that in the first place hey we're already past that point i've had this truck for over five years or a little under five years actually and it's been for the most part a really really good truck now there are a few scenarios like i said that i can go with one would be trading it in because my five-year lease is up in a couple of weeks trading it in getting a brand new truck starting all over again with a new truck but the payments are going to be about four hundred dollars more than what i pay now per week and um it is going to be a truck with a cummins engine that's scenario number one scenario number two the truck is still under warranty for the, for another three weeks. Um, I can carry or drive the truck over because it's not overheating or anything. I can run the truck over to a Peterbilt dealership, which I've already called three of them in my area, and they all have a long backup. The one in Houston, it would probably be a couple of months or more before I can even get my truck back. The other ones are going to be about a month or so. Um, I can take it to them, let them fix it, and then I can rent the truck um, that I just went and checked out. But the problem with that scenario is that the rental on the truck that I'm going to get from the company, which I mean, it's cool that they offer um, that they offer this service, but it's going to be eight hundred and seventy five dollars per week for the rental on that truck. Whether I use it or not, it's eight hundred and seventy five bucks. Plus, I still have to pay for my truck note and insurance and all that other stuff so it's going to be over two grand per week i have to make at least four to five thousand dollars a week for me to even you know get some type of income coming in and um so that's scenario number two scenario number three is me rent the truck from the company for one week or two for the 875 and then I pay the shop that the truck's at now $7,000 to repair the head gasket out of pocket. So I'm kind of like between a rock and a hard place because if the other dealership, if Peterbilt takes over two months to get my truck back, that means I'm going to be paying a ton of money on this rental plus the payments on my truck and all the other stuff, just what I just explained. And uh, it's going to be very expensive. And it's only it's going to cost me probably around the same amount of money as me just getting the shop that it's at to repair it. I don't know if you guys uh, kind of understood all that. I know that's a whole mess, but that's the mess I'm dealing with right now. The only thing is, man, that, that I want to tell you guys and I want you guys to understand is that no matter what happens, it's supposed to happen. It's meant to happen. I'm, I'm supposed to be where I'm at right now. And the way I deal with it is what's going to make a difference for me. Should I, if I'm stressed out and try to make things more stressful for myself, that's just going to be harmful for me. And it's not going to help the situation. If I just, you know, have faith in God that it, this is where he wants him to be. This is the plan. And things are all going to smooth out and work out. Then, you know, that's another way I can take it. So, I, I always try to think, take everything that happens to me with a grain of salt. And I always say when something happens to me, I always first thing that I do is I, I thank God, even though it's bad things that I think it's a bad thing that's going on. Um, I always thank God for any situation that happens to me, whether it's good or bad, just because this is the plan this is how it's supposed to be. There's nothing I can do. I'm already here at this point. So I'm just going to, I always try to just stay positive and I'm going to stay positive and we're going to work through this and we're going to make whatever needs to happen, happen. But I do cherish you guys, you know, all of you guys that watch the channel. I cherish everything that you guys say and I take everything that you guys tell me. Now, thankful, thankfully for one of you watching the video actually pointed out that the coolant, the color of the coolant was looking a little weird and it looked like it's some type of exhaust that's in the coolant tank. So 
you guys help me out a lot. And I, I'm going to sit here and tell you guys, you guys help me more than you guys think that you do. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really do appreciate everything that you guys say. And I take every, you know, I read every comment. I might not reply to every comment, but I read every comment. And um, I do take everything that you guys tell me um, to heart. And I, you know, I try to pay attention to things because you guys open my, my eyes a lot of the times. So that's what I got going on. Before this video is over with, we will know exactly what's wrong with it. Hopefully, um, they were going to tell me by the end of this evening, and uh, we'll know what route we actually need to take. Um, but nonetheless, please, you know, comment down below. Let me know what you guys think that I should do. Um, right now, I'm headed back to that shop just because my cousin Jake, um, I've done a video with him before. Um, he's getting his clutch done there, so I'm going to go pick him up since we're in Houston and he's in Houston. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick him up and give him a ride back to Huntsville where he lives. And, um, you know, why make him spend any money on Uber or whatever if I'm already in the area? And uh, it's truckers helping truckers, guys. Just just like um, my boy uh, Richard, Gemini G7, helped me out whenever I dropped off the truck and went and picked me up and took me, you know, where I needed to get to my car same thing you know you pay it back whatever you do you always try to pay it back try to pay it forward to the next person because we're the only ones that are out here you know we, we know how, we deal with these things day in and day out with problems with our trucks and problems with all kinds of stuff so um anyways before i make this all too long um i'm gonna head back to the shop and then we're gonna see what what route we're gonna end up taking and uh and uh we're gonna keep our fingers crossed and uh Pray to God that things are going to work out. They will. They'll work. They'll work out one way or another. All right, fam. So it's been quite a few days since I started this video. It's been actually almost a week since I started this video. And I wanted to give you guys at the end, I told you I was going to let you know what was going on with the truck at the very end. And we still don't know 100%. By the time this video is done, hopefully... Well, by the time you guys see this video, hopefully the truck is repaired and ready to go. But here is what is really happening to old poor hot chocolate. And yes, at less than 500,000 miles, this is a major, major setback. So um, there are two potential things that are going on. Uh, number one, for sure, head gasket needs to be replaced. So we're going to have to get the head gas gasket replaced. And that runs about $8,000 just for the head gasket job. Now, if they open up the engine and they see scoring or they see things that that aren't adding up as far as, you know, the parameters are off on the pistons and stuff like that or whatever, I'm not a mechanic, so that's kind of what he said, then it's going to have to go into a major in-frame, major engine rebuild, and that's going to cost upwards of twenty-four dollars to $25,000. That's the worst case scenario. Still hoping it's just a head job, just, I mean, just a head gasket job, but um, it could be possibly a full engine rebuild. Um, now, the truck is under the 500,000 mile engine warranty, but unfortunately, it's beyond the time. So it's five years, 500,000 miles, and it's about a month past the um, five years. So... Unfortunately, warranty is not going to cover this one. I'm going to have to bite the bullet and um, just going to have to get a loan from work to pay the truck, to pay the, the repair bill because that's 25 grand that I don't have. Well, it's actually going to be up about 30,000 when it's all said and done because that's also all the other repair work that's been done. Now, a lot of you guys might think, was it even worth it anymore at this point to pay put $30,000 into this truck that's five years old? Um, and the Peterbilt 389 luckily has a pretty decent resale value. So it kind of is worth it to go ahead and fix it and, um, continue using it because the resale value is really good on those trucks. Um, and if anything major happens once I get through paying it off, cause I have, still have two more years to finish paying the truck off. Once I pay the truck off, then more than likely what I'll end up doing is becoming a local Texas driver or um, just a certain little region 
where we're gonna just take out the emissions engine and put in a trusty old 60 series or a, um, a Cummins engine. Definitely definitely not a, a, a Caterpillar, just because I know it's the best engine, one of the best engines in the world, but it is very expensive to maintain as well. And it's more a lot more expensive to get one of those engines to put in hot chocolate than it is to get a 60 series because they're a little more readily available. So as of now, we're going to just figure it out and we're going to have to rent the truck. Um, thank you guys, uh, all of you that commented before we got to this spot where I'm letting you know that I'm actually renting the truck that I'm going to rent and it's going to be very pricey to rent it. But nonetheless, it's money to it's for me to continue working and some money coming into the house is better than none. So I got to look at things that way. And I still am looking at things in a positive manner. Um, I'm not getting depressed about all this stuff. Um, just like the, you know, the rain outside feels depressing, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to stay on the uppity up and not trying to get depressed and fall into that crater because I've been there a bunch of times and, um, I'm trying to be better than that and not try to fall into that. I'm not saying that those of you that have fallen into depression are not better than anything. I mean, it's, we, it's mental things that we have to deal with and we deal with, and some of us deal with them one way or the other. So if you're dealing with that type of stuff, um, prayers to you, seek help and try to get out of that void, that, uh, out of that, that hole that you think you're in. Um, but yeah, I feel that way sometimes too, guys. And right now, I mean, I should be feeling like it's, you know, everything is terrible and whatever, but like I said um, during the video that I try to stay positive and I try to thank God for the situation that I'm in, where I'm at right now at this particular time, what's happening with my truck. You know, even though it might sound like it's uh, counterintuitive or, or, or I don't even know if that's the right word, but even though it sounds like, um, like that's not, uh, you know, the best way to think about things because the situation is quote unquote bad, but there's nothing I could do about it at this point in time. So why even really stress? Um, luckily, I have these avenues where the company I'm leased to, uh, shout out to uh, Hennef, the company I'm leased to, um, they will loan me the money to repair the truck. It's going to come out of cost, but it's money that I didn't have. And that's the avenue that I have to take. And they're letting me rent a truck to continue working. So I'm going to continue bringing money and uh, putting food on the table. So that's what's going on, guys. I will keep you guys updated in the later videos to tell you uh, what's actually going on, what's actually happened, and how much it all costs. Because I do not like to hide anything from you guys. I like to be as straightforward. So you guys, if you ever get in this situation, you kind of know what you're dealing with, you're going to deal with. And those of you that want to get into owner operator, you can uh, figure out whether you really want to do this or you really don't want to do this. Hopefully this is a little tool for you guys to help you make that decision. With that being said, guys, I am out of here. I'm on my way to work, actually. Going to go jump in the rental truck and head it up to Cleveland, Ohio, and um, just do what I have to do, guys. Love you guys. Thank you for all the prayers. Thank you for, for all the best wishes. Thank you for everything that you guys always do for me. Uh, I really do mean that from the bottom of my heart. Please be good. Don't forget to be kind to one another. Help anybody needs help. Anybody contemplating suicide, 1-800-273-8255. Military men and women, thank you for your service. See you guys on the next video. Peace. We're out of here.